UFO world is ablaze right now. What some are calling the UFO caucus held a press conference yesterday. Let's take a look. Unelected bureaucrats do not get to say what we can and cannot see. We've had three-star generals tell us that we did not have authorized access to this information. But yet, how do you expect us to continue to send taxpayer money to fund government projects if you're not even allowing us to see what those projects are? And I say that because, as some of you know, we have been consistently hearing that we do ha not have the authorized clearances, again, by people not elected to office. Let me repeat this, that people's representatives, members of Congress who sit on judiciary, armed services, and the oversight committees are being denied access to this information. But if we do not have the clearance, who does? Does this sound like a truly free country? This comes as more information on what exactly the government is hiding from the American public on the subject. Let's watch journalist Ross Coldhart on with News Nation's Chris Cuomo last night. Yes government agencies, at least including the CIA, have specific programs and manpower to deal with things that are in the air that they can't identify, want collected and studied. Absolutely, Chris. Firstly, good evening and good day, Tim. I, what I can tell you is the Office of Global Access is the office in the CIA that has been coordinating this. They have been doing crash retrievals for many years. Um, one of the things that I do take issue with in the Daily Mail story today is that they say there's just nine craft that been, have been recovered. My understanding is that there are considerably more. And uh, as the article accurately reports, this is done in collaboration with JSOC, the Joint Special Operations Command, notably with special forces drawn primarily from the US Air Force. So yes, the article is accurate, and I've got it also confirmed independently by multiple senior intelligence sources. What's more is that there are two competing pieces of legislation on the docket concerning UAPs. Here to discuss is Hill opinion contributor, Mark von Redenkamp. Welcome. First of all, can you tell us a little bit about what these proposals on Capitol Hill are as they relate to UAPs? Absolutely. And, and guys, thanks for having me on. Um, the bottom line is that these two pieces of legislation, we have the, the Senator Schumer's UAP Disclosure Act and then uh, legislation from Congressman Burchett. And the bottom line, and I'll make it very simple, is transparency. And it is to release government records. Um, and we can get into the kind of the nitty gritty, but Senator Schumer, remarkable. It's extraordinary. It is 64 pope and breadth. Um, uh, Congressman Burchett's legislation, on the other hand, is very narrowly focused and it's got several carve outs that I suspect a government that wants to hide things can um, can exploit and it can use those loopholes to get away with keeping um, many, many more documents and records under wraps. What do you make of what was said in that press conference there? It's a criticism that we've had on this show for a while now, but it's that People in the Pentagon, people in the Department of Defense have the purview to decide what information is released, having never been elected to public office. And they're telling elected officials what can and cannot be released. But it sounds like they do have some friends in Congress, per your recent reporting, some key Republicans wanting to tide some of this, have some lack of transparency around the UFO, UAP issue. But just what's your reaction to that sentiment about the divide between, you know, these security establishment people and elected officials? Uh, Jessica, you're, you're really getting to the root of the issue here. And, and all six of those members of Congress, and I applaud every single one of them, that bipartisan group that was up there yesterday, uh, hit exactly on that point, right? And that is the, the notion that unelected bureaucrats, I think as Congresswoman Luna said, um, have the authority to dictate what the American people and the, the elected representatives of the American people can and cannot see. And what you saw yesterday, in this conference was anybody who watches it, you'll see all six of those uh, members of Congress expressed extraordinary frustration, just absolute frustration with the obstruction, the, the stonewalling um, and the obfuscation that they're seeing um, and encountering on the Hill. And I think um, Congressman Mo Moskowitz basically said, I don't really care if it's aliens or not. What I, what's really piquing my interest, I think that's exactly what he said, is 
um, is the fact that uh, this is being obstructed. What, what, that is really what's driving some of their interest. Um, so again, you hit the nail on the head. That is, that is really the core of the issue here. Yeah, to your point, Mark, I mean, for them to be so tight-lipped about what classified information they have would suggest to the average observer that they do have something to hide. Otherwise, why not allow these lawmakers to at least see the information, even if they're not necessarily allowed to release it to the public? I mean, my understanding is that they haven't even been able to necessarily go into a skiff and, and see the materials themselves. Amber, you're, you're spot on again. You guys are, um, I'm glad you guys are, are so sharp on this. So absolutely. And, and I think the, the kind of the, um, the refrain that we heard and keep hearing and what I've been kind of saying is if there's nothing to see here, why the hell is it so, so deeply, deeply classified and why is there so much obstruction? And I, I just want to quickly point to um, the government's own UFO report came out last month in October. Pardon me, that was uh, two months ago now. And um, it said it said very specifically that there are some some objects out there that have concerning indicators such as high speed and, and unconventional performance, but they're not ours. We've deconflicted them with our programs. They're explicitly saying they're not ours. They also say that none of the most recent reports have any connection to a foreign adversary. None. That's that's they you can look that up. So so if they're not foreign and they're not our own secret tech, why is this so deeply classified? And the sources and methods excuse that they all frequently put out is nonsense, right? If a fighter, if a Chinese fighter jet flies within 100 feet and conducts an, an unsafe maneuver in front of one of our airplanes, that uh, footage is declassified and released like that. But for, for whatever reason, when it comes to the UFO uh, videos and data, that stuff never sees the light of day. Why is that? Why? That's the question. Let's talk about the two things that need to happen for some of these records to be released. You wrote about this first. There would need to be the, the records review board with top security clearance assessing the information. And this review board is composed of, quote, distinguished persons of high national professional reputation. Not sure what that means or how they pick them, but then secondly, the president would also need to sign off on the release. What do you know, if anything, about who decides who is on this review board and who they might be? So, um, great question. Um, I, I hope I'm not betraying any confidence here, but I was, uh, a few weeks ago, I was actually in a room with um, an individual who wrote that legislation. I had a very significant um, amount of input into that legislation. And according to this individual, um, the, the folks, the people that would be on this review board um, would be serious individuals. We're talking about Nobel level econ economists, uh, former perhaps secretaries of defense, right? People who, who we know and, and have not had any nexus to these supposed crash retrieval and reverse engineering efforts, but are, are of extremely high stature. Um, and that was the intent, again, from an individual who, who had uh, either wrote the legislation himself or, or had um, a significant amount of input with Senate staffers on writing it. All right, Mark Vaughn Renenkamp, thank you so much for joining us. We'll have to have you back soon to give us an update on whether or not the government has decided to give us a little more transparency. Thanks again. Thanks so much, guys.